It's time for the Susan Taylor Podcast, where we discuss the yoga of mind, medicine, and healing. Author of Feeling Good Matters, Sexual Radiance, and the Vital Energy Program, Dr. Taylor imparts authentic knowledge and practical tools that inspire, educate, and empower us to be a healing force for positive change. So join us and take your life and our planet to the next level. Hello and welcome to episode 104, 10 Solutions to Keep Your Mind Clear of Clutter. You know, today more than ever, we're in a climate of fear, worry, and anger leading to fatigue and literally indigestion, both physically and mentally. In fact, many people don't realize that the way that they digest food parallels the way that they digest day-to-day experiences. Today's topic seems to be one of the most popular topics that people find interest on retreats or even the podcasts. And I think the reason why is that we have so much worry and stress due to the current climate of our world that they just want to let go of these unwanted thoughts. In other words, do some house cleaning. So in today's episode, I'd like to discuss what does it mean to have a clean mind or clear the clutter? What causes toxic mental buildup and ways to restore a healthy, worry-free mind? Think of your mind as your most precious real estate. And would you ever rent out a room in your house without being compensated? No, right? But we do that all the time when we let our negative thinking, for example, worry, fear, anger, resentment, rent space in our mind. At almost every moment in our lives, we're thinking and making decisions. And some of our thinking is spontaneous to satisfy an immediate sensory desire, which more often than not leaves us in an uncomfortable situation down the line. Other thoughts, although not immediately gratifying, lead to a feeling of positive supporting strength and vitality. We feel good about ourselves. You know, when we define a healthy state of mind, we think of a mind which is positive, creative, balanced, and one that looks at the long-term consequences of any action. You know, a mind that is reflective and able to respond instead of reacting is a very healthy mind. Also, a mind that thinks from the universal mind field and not the individual ego, looking at the self, like what's happening to me rather than what can I do for others. You know, we all seek to have a joyful or clear mind free of clutter, and you know, one that's creative and balanced, with the desire to promote goodness in the world. We all want to contribute to the goodness in the world. In Sanskrit, the term that applies to this clear, creative, pure mind is sattva, a word that is often translated as purity. On the other hand, impurity in the mind can exist and does indeed exist. We have a lot of clutter. Impurities in the mind that I'll get to in a moment create undigested mental residues or mental toxicities, what in Sanskrit is called ama. So let's look at specifically what causes the clutter to build up. Well, when clutter builds up, our mind, as I mentioned, doesn't digest the experience. So it's just like when we don't digest our food, we become constipated. It sounds funny, but we can be mentally constipated too. So what are the substances that create this lack of movement or we're holding on and not removing and having a clear mind free of clutter? Well, we all know, and I've said it over and over again, negative emotions such as anger, fear, greed, resentment, and guilt. You know, in traditional Chinese medicine, it's known that these negative emotions create organ toxicity and over time produce an array of disease states. For example, if your liver's not functioning correctly, it's going to produce anger. Or you might have anger and it causes the liver to become sluggish. I'm just giving you an example. So whenever you go and get some healing work or talk to somebody who's a healing practitioner, Make sure that those two kinds of concepts are understood, that the body creates havoc in the mind or the mind can create havoc in the body. It's a bi-directional influence. It's not one or the other because remember, the body and mind are one and what goes on in the mind creates a blueprint happening in the body so it can change our organ systems. 
and we see that in the brain, which we call brain plasticity. Another way we can produce these this clutter is having psychological stresses, which kind of feeds from the first with negative emotions. But the psychological stresses that include family problems, poor working conditions. So many people are stressed at work because they're downsizing and they don't replace the people. So everyone seems to be doing more work. There's no free time to be with family. There's no free time, even if you're, <laughs> people are making money, but they're not able to utilize that money in a way where they could enjoy their life. But you could also have the opposite, a loss of money or employment, divorce, death in the family. And what the media is feeding our minds for those that hook into the media. And many of you who know me know that there, I do that digital detox daily. I don't turn on things until 10 and sometimes noon before I start engaging in the digital world. Because we're all aware that stress is at the root of many disease states, including heart disease, obesity, anxiety, and many immune function and digestive disorders. And it's of no surprise. The third is an unhealthy home or setting where we are. Surrounding ourselves in a place that's detrimental to our physical and emotional health, whether it be toxic garden area or contaminants, you know, or toxic and spoiled nutrition, or even an environment that is not harmoniously balanced. For example, uh, someone was just telling me that they went in for to visit their practitioner, their doctor, because they're having a health concern, and there's TVs blaring, there's <coughs> radios blaring. Well, that's not conducive to really helping people heal. It doesn't quiet the mind. It brings the mind outward again. And when the mind is outward, it can't work on the healing, healing status of what's going on on the inside. So keep that in mind, unhealthy home or settings. Unhealthy relationships or environments kind of feeds off this last one. But I'm talking here about contacting with other people's negativity. You know, negativity breeds disease for sure. And many don't think that they are negative because it's so natural to them to complain and gossip. We don't even know that we're complaining and we actually are. So just be aware that this vibration is certainly not healthy and will saturate your mind very, very quickly. It's really hard to get out of it. You know, I, many times I didn't realize that I was complaining and I really was. So it's best to just stay in the moment, hear what others have to say, no gossip, no complaining. The fifth, exposure to violent, crude or shocking experiences in life or in the media. You know, when people are listening to these, vi the violent news, the shocking experiences, believe me, it's not really good for the minefield. Because, you know, our social media for sure sends shocking flashes, creating sensory overload, and we can't digest that. And it's always stored. It gets stored no matter what, once you see it and you're shocked by it. So be aware of what you watch and hear through computers and other technology that enters our personal space uninvited. We're not inviting it. You know, now we could see those situations. I just reviewed them. You've heard me speak about them before. They create the clutter, the undigested mental material, which actually turns into physical ailments and psychological ailments. So what are some solutions to keep your mind clear of the clutter? The first I've outlined is listen to your body's wisdom. Your body provides feedback as it reflects what's going on in your mind. When we worry, we may create, create a little bit of indigestion, for example. The second, practice awareness of the present moment, not the past or the future. The easiest way to do that is to focus on the root of the nose, watching the breath enter and leave the nostrils. Remember, your breath connects the mind and body. The awareness of the breath not only helps you with the mind, but it also helps you with your physiological aspect of your body and makes you stay in a healthy state. Third, take time to be out in nature daily. During this time of the year when it's a little bit darker, 
it's really good if you can to get out in the morning and do a walk, even if it's 10 minutes before you get in the car to go to work or a bus or a train, or just sit down to even record a podcast, for example. Get out in nature, connect with that in the morning before you start your day. Fourth, take a digital break daily. Digital breaks are now mandatory as far as I'm concerned when it comes to physical health. We've gotten out of control with our physical allurement to these digital gadgets. We must really be conscious of this and do digital break training. <laughs> and we have to do that on a daily basis. Otherwise, you will never be able to come to that state of tranquility of mind. Five. Relinquish your need for others to like and approve you and what you need to control how others think and behave. Now, that doesn't mean say, oh, I don't care what people think. Usually when you say you don't care what people think, you really do care what people think. Because once you don't care what people think, you don't have to say it anymore. You know, there's the old saying, people that say don't know and people that don't speak really do know. So we're going to really relinquish your need for others to like and approve you. And that's a very, very subtle way to train the mind because we do look for that approval. I had somebody saying to me the other day, I really want to be adored. I want people to appreciate me. And my statement was, how much do you adore and appreciate other individuals? It doesn't work. If, you, if you're not appreciating and adoring other people, why would you expect others to appreciate and adore you? We always have to go back to the self. The sixth, practice trust. With trust, we can let go of all our anxiety and just know everything is exactly where it needs to be at this exact time. The seventh, shed the burden of judgment. You know, each time, you've heard me say it over and over again, we analyze others, you know, we analyze their behaviors and doings. What we really do is stroking our own ego saying, wow, why can't everybody be like me? After all, I would never do that to somebody. Well, the world doesn't revolve around us. So we find issues and those issues are really our greatest of teachers because they reflect our own being. Whatever we find weak in others is something that, and if we have issues with it and we find it as a judgment, not if we just notice it, but if we judge it as something, it's usually because the judgment or that, that behavior actually exists within ourselves. And the first place to really look at that is go look at your family, deal with your family, and you'll get to see how that really is reflected. That's what's so beautiful, beautiful about having a family. They're here to help us train our own mind and to love and forgive and to move forward with not having any uh, animosity, but just love and joy and selflessness. Eight, eliminate the food toxins in your diet. Remember, diet habits directly affect the way we think and behave. There's plenty of us that know if we eat certain foods, we, even if you get an upset stomach after that, that's going to affect because of the biome. Remember, the bi-directional communication, it's going to affect your mind and how you feel. Nine, recognize that everything that happens in the physical world is a representation of our thinking and manifesting. So that doesn't make it, that doesn't, I'm not saying here, and I'm going to really be clarifying this. One of a really good friend of mine, a close friend of mine injured herself and, uh, and she uh, had fallen while she was out hiking in nature and she broke her arm, a very serious break. And, you know, someone said to her, what does her own physician said to her, which was shocking to me, what is it that the universe is trying to teach you? People have taken this a little bit too far. Now, I just said, recognize that everything that happens in the physical world is a representation of our thinking and manifesting, but things happen. You're walking along and something juts out and you fall. It doesn't mean anything. You fell. Move on from that. Remember the old story of the great teacher who was struck by an arrow and his students were there ready to take the arrow from him. But wait, let's see. Where did it come from? Who did it? How, how long is the arrow? Who could have done it? And how far, how long does it have to stay in, etc.? In other words, let go of all of that, but, but 
just move on from that. That's my point. Just because things are happening in our physical world to our body, you know, we get diagnosed with certain ailments. Don't go into the space of thinking that you did something. It's just something that happens. Remember, thinking and manifesting in the world is a representation of the collective consciousness, not just you as an individual. So just recognize that the world is our physical manifestation. But I just wanted to throw that in here that, you know, if something happens and you fall or stumble or, you know, you close the door on your finger or something, you know, the world's not trying to teach you something. It, that, that's too that's that's just too self-absorbed to be thinking that way and it's very hurtful for the mind and the person that's really having the experience and the tenth remain calm awareness is the key to gaining freedom from clutter we train our awareness not our mind necessarily so remember i said when we close our eyes and we're doing a practice is it our mind that we have to train or the thoughts or do we train our awareness we rope we bring in we reel in our awareness and focus on who we are the observer that's who we are remember the mind is the process of observation and then what we're thinking about is the object of observation so what we really want to do when we remain calm is reel in our awareness bring the mind back home and sit and breathe and just be with ourselves and then everything comes into a peaceful state when we do community practice it really helps you know clear the clutter from the mind but when we don't have community practice we can do it daily with ourselves at a scheduled time in a systematic way you know following this program take any 10 of them why don't i review them for you listen to your body's wisdom practice awareness of the present moment Take time to be out in nature daily. Take a digital break. Relinquish your need for others to like and approve of what you're doing or you. Practice trust. Shed the burden of judgment. Eliminate the food toxins in your diet. Recognize that everything that happens in the physical world is a representation of our thinking and manifestation collectively not necessarily individually, but that also, of course, but there's a collective movement that can create our anxiety, not just ourselves thinking that way. And then remain calm, consciously aware, living in the moment. Following this program will allow your system to metabolize the remains of previously undigested experiences. Your attitude will become one of ease and and just balance. You'll be more compassionate with a sense of of just balance, of moving f with the flow of life. You'll get rid of the strain and rigidity that we sometimes hold on to. You know, within a short time, you'll begin to notice an increased sense of lightness in the mind and body, along with more energy and a natural enthusiasm for life, which I really turn when we're talking about vital energy, that luminous, that luminous light, that's our radiance. And that comes when we have lightness of mind. As I always say, do your research and see what works for you. And that brings us to the end of this episode. And the Susan Taylor podcast does come out every week and is available on susantaylor.org, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, and other podcast platforms. And keep in mind that if you like the podcast, please share it on the YouTube channel. You can go there, subscribe, and share it if you like. And it'll really help support the, the community. We're over 200 now, and let's just keep that momentum happening. Visit to SusanTaylor.org again for more information, or contact me with questions or comments or even feedback. Again, I incorporate that into the content. The content that I'm bringing to you is what you're asking for. And I'm always happy to do that with you. And until next time, as I always say, remain calm. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Thank you.